Ooh, wow, that is surprisingly good. Quite recently, Adobe released a major update for Lightroom selective adjustment tools and we got these all new select sky and select subject tools that we've never had in Lightroom before. Those tools have been in Photoshop for a while now, but they are now finally in Lightroom as well. So today I just want to test out how well those tools actually work. And we're going to take a look at the select sky just as it is and then select subject in three different aspects. One being animals, one being people, and one being other kinds of objects. So let's jump into Lightroom and start off with photos of people, because I think that is what the Select Subject tool is actually made for. And you can even see the image of the Select Subject tool has a cutout of a person in it. And I'm going to start off with a fairly easy photo, a studio photo of me. We're just going to click on select subject here and see what Lightroom does. And as I suspected, the selection with a photo like this with a person on a simple background is fairly good. It's not perfect if you zoom into these darker areas. The selection is by no means perfect, but it's quite good and it's a very good starting point for doing those selective adjustments. Now moving on to the second image, this is actually my father. And once again, we have a very simple background with a person in it, so this should be easy. And once again, we have a very clean selection. In this case, it's even better than in the previous one because we have more contrast between the subject and the background. But if we look at the ear here, this is not completely perfect. But I think for something like this, this is a very good selection with just one click. Now moving on to the third image of a person. I think this one is going to be extremely hard for Lightroom because we have a black hat and a black background. So there's really no contrast between the cap and the background. So let's click on select subject and see what happens. Ooh, I'm actually amazed by how good the selection is all around because we have a black background and a black hat. I think the AI is kind of guessing where the edges of the person is. Even with the shirt, it's like it looks really clean, even though we have a black shirt that is not completely in focus even, and we have a black background. So really nice job here. So let's move on to the next image where we have me once again in a home background. So we're not in like a studio. We don't have a simple background, but kind of a more natural background with stuff behind me. So it's not just a blank background. So. Here Lightroom does have a bit of difficulty in seeing which part is the shirt and which part is this like pillow here as well as down here by my knee and well let's not look at that part of the image too carefully. But overall the selection is really looking good. You could just tweak this like small parts of this. So the next image is a portrait of that same friend of mine that was in the black studio environment, but now we're in a bar and he has a black hat, a black jacket and the background is really dark as well. So I don't think this is going to be easy for Lightroom. Once again, I am really surprised about how good this selection is. It is obviously not perfect, but it's really good. And once again, I think the AI is kind of guessing on where the edges go in areas like these, where it's like basically completely black because there's no contrast for the AI to look at. So I think it's kind of doing a guesswork, but it's doing that guessing really, really well. Okay, so next up we have this kind of a silhouette photo during a sunset. So let's see. Lightroom does a really good job here as well. It's not perfect, but it's something we can work with. Really good job, nothing too special. This is kind of what I was expecting. Now moving on to the next image, I think this should be quite easy. There's a black background of this like cave entrance and then the person in it. Okay, now this is interesting. I wasn't expecting this at all, but Lightroom has no idea where the subject of this image is. So finally we have an image that Lightroom cannot really figure out. And with this, I think it's going to do a very similar job to the previous one because once again, the person is quite small in there and the contrast between my shirt and the background is kind of similar. So there's not really much contrast going on there. I think it's going to select the mountain here, but we'll see. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. It's not, I mean, this is not really a good selection, but it's a good starting point. The subject is fully selected but we have this extra selection going on here in the rocks and the sea. And that is the last one of these people photos. So let's move on to photos of animals. 
and we're gonna start off with a photo of a cat and I don't think this right side of the image is going to be easy for a Lightroom and it's not so we clearly don't have a good selection on the right side here but otherwise the selection is looking pretty good just by the head of the cat here as well the head is such a similar color to the barrel behind the head so that's why Lightroom gets confused now this fox is very similar in color to the background so I think this is going to be hard and it is, this is not that good of a selection in a few places, but once again, it does find the subject and it does select most of the subject, just the nose is kind of not selected. Quite good for one click, but not perfect, but we could work with that. Uh, I think this photo will be easy. And it is, this selection is really good, but we do have a lot of contrast between the sheep and the background because the sheep is so white and the background is kind of dark green. So down here, I thought this would be a lot harder, but Lightroom does a really good job of selecting the feet of this sheep, even though they are blurred out and there's a lot of stuff going on. Now with this photo, I'm really interested to see if Lightroom thinks the bird is the subject or if it thinks the hand is the subject or if it will select the both and it does select both of them. Now, I would have wanted to select only the bird, but if this is something that you would have wanted, then in that case, this is a really good selection. But of course, if there are two subjects in a photo, Lightroom won't be able to know which one of the subjects you want to select. And next up, we have a photo of a small fox cub. Now, I think this is going to be hard. I, I'm guessing Lightroom will select the head of the fox, but not kind of the body of the fox because it's kind of in the shades. And it does select the head, it doesn't select the body as I suspected, but it also did select this log here, which is something I definitely did not want. Now with this photo, I think Lightroom is going to have a really hard job because of these antlers of this reindeer. And the selection isn't too great. The body of the reindeer is mainly selected, but these white parts aren't. And then we have this back thing I don't even know what that is selected as well and we don't have these antlers selected at all not really a great selection oh and the back also here isn't selected so with a photo like this where there's a lot of similar colors in the subject and the background and then you have all of these kind of things sticking out the main subject of the photo Lightroom doesn't know what to do at all but that is it for the photos of animals so let's move on to subjects so let's see in a landscape photo like this we have a boat and Lightroom does a really good job as expected now a mushroom I think this is going to be a bit harder oh wow that is surprisingly good I wasn't expecting Lightroom to do this good of a job but it did now this is kind of a clear subject here but I didn't think Lightroom would uh, know where the subject ends and where the background starts but this is a really really good selection and then we have a couple of food photos now I'm interested to see if Lightroom only picks the stuff on this plate like this big chunk of food or if it will also pick the nuts and stuff on the right hand side and this selection is the worst so far so we're Picking the food on the plate quite well, not perfectly. We do have a lot of this plate selected as well and we don't have the whipped cream selected. But we have so much of this white uh, sheet here selected as well that this selection is not good at all in any ways basically. And I would have thought Lightroom would have done a lot better job with this. Now in this photo I'm really waiting to see if Lightroom picks the glass or only the food inside the glass. And it does kind of pick a part of the glass as well. I don't know what I think of that. I wouldn't really select that but it's kind of the subject. So Lightroom in a way is doing a good job in selecting the actual subject of the image which in a way is this glass. But I wouldn't want to do any tweaks to the glass so I wouldn't select that. But we're also selecting some of these blueberries here in the foreground but we're not selecting the ones further away from the camera. Once again, a really, really good selection with just one click, but not perfect. We would have to work on this manually. And that is all for the select subject part of this video. And I think Lightroom is surprisingly good with selecting subjects, especially if they are people. The option to do these good selections with just one click is amazing in my opinion. And these are so good. These selections are 
really amazing for just one click you do have to refine most of what i've tried to select here but being able to do most of the job with one click super fast is amazing now let's see how select sky works and let's start off with a landscape photo with a lot of reflections in the water now I don't know if Lightroom will only pick the top part of the image or if it will also pick the reflection. Oh, I clicked on select subject. I'm gonna click on select sky. Now Lightroom did only pick the sky, the actual sky and not the reflection, which is really good. I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting Lightroom to also pick the reflection, but it didn't. And the selection also looks really good. Really, really precise with the trees here. Let's move on to the next image. Now with this photo we have a really bright part in the sky, so I think it's going to get mixed up with the water. But it doesn't, okay, I'm surprised on how good this is. It kind of mixes some of the water with the sky, but not too much. This is a really good selection. Now judging by what we've seen, I think Lightroom will have an easy job with this, but these trees are kind of complex, but the selection looks really good there's a bit of this kind of haloing effect going on with some of these trees but this is looking like a really good selection i'm gonna assume lightroom will have no idea what the sky is in this photo and it actually did a surprisingly good job a lot of these areas of the sky are selected but there's a lot that is not selected as well so i wasn't expecting lightroom to do this good of a job but by no means is this a perfect selection of the sky but it's way better than what i was expecting so that is all for the select sky if you have a landscape photo with a very clear foreground and sky Lightroom will have no issues in selecting the sky really well, but if you have a ton of leaves that are kind of blurred out, you will get a bit of a mushy selection. So overall, I think the select sky and select subject tools are really, really powerful. They are way better than what I expected them to be. Now also, if you don't know too much about these new masking tools in Lightroom, I made a video about this new update, so you can check that out here. Thank you for watching and I hope I will see you in the next one.